Hi my friends, and welcome back to the You Can Do TV channel. The construction of Noryang Bridge, spanning across Noryang Ri in Jiamnam Mayan, Hadonggun, was a response to the burgeoning demands of tourism and cargo transportation in the western Jiangsangnam Du region. The decision to build this bridge was necessitated by the need to replace the aging Namhai Bridge with a passing load limit of 32 tons. The foundation of the tower, capable of supporting a load of 42,000 tons, was meticulously crafted with a direct concrete foundation measuring 50 meters wide, 30 meters long, and 8 meters high. The construction process involved precision engineering, with the excavation of the original ground exceeding 30 meters in depth. The pylon construction employed advanced techniques such as auto-climbing, allowing for the adjustment of cross-sectional shapes and inclination angles. Each section of the pylon was meticulously constructed on a solid rock surface, ensuring stability and durability. The bridge, resembling the majestic wings of a crane akin to Chun Mugang Yi Sun Sins, stands as a symbol of engineering prowess and aesthetic beauty. Its construction was not merely a functional endeavor but also aimed to preserve the natural splendor of the Halioe Song National Park. One of the remarkable features of the Noryang Bridge is its innovative design, incorporating tilted pylons to overcome technical constraints. Unlike traditional suspension bridges, the main tower was erected on land, standing at an impressive height of 140.86 meters. This unconventional approach not only improved structural efficiency but also enhanced the visual appeal of the bridge. To commemorate Chu Mugang's historic victories, the bridge was designed to form a V-shape, symbolizing triumph and openness. The anchorage system, capable of accommodating immense weight, was engineered with meticulous detail to ensure the safety and stability of the main cable. The construction of the main cable, consisting of 7,680 strands of 5.3 mm wire, was a complex process involving the air spinning method. Temporary facilities were meticulously laid out on the catwalk floor to facilitate this intricate task. The tension of the wire was carefully regulated by the balance tower on the ground, maintaining a constant level of tautness essential for the spinning process. As the spinning wheel arrived at the anchorage, the intricate task of spinning the wire commenced. The wire was delicately wrapped around the strand shoe, ensuring a secure and uniform placement. This process was repeated for each strand, with 480 strands meticulously bundled together to form the main cable. Late-night measurements, conducted when temperatures were stable, ensured precise adjustments to the cable's height. Following the completion of the main cable, reinforcement girders were installed to further strengthen the bridge's structure. These girders, 
weighing a total of 8,500 tons and manufactured with precision in Guangyang, were transported to the construction site via barges and specialized lifting devices. The installation process, which involved swinging the girders into place and connecting them with temporary devices, required careful coordination and expertise. Once all 45 reinforcing girder blocks were installed, the final connections were integrated using welding and bolts, ensuring structural cohesion and stability. The completion of the reinforcement girder marked a significant milestone in the bridge's construction, paving the way for the final phases of the project. The main cable, composed of S-shaped wire designed to prevent corrosion, underwent thorough surface wrapping and painting to enhance durability and longevity. State-of-the-art lighting was incorporated into the bridge's design, creating a captivating night view that changes with the seasons. This aesthetic enhancement not only adds to the bridge's allure but also contributes to its role as a tourist attraction. Noryang Bridge, with its clean sea vistas and stunning surroundings within Haliuesong National Park, has become a focal point for tourism, bolstering the local economy and providing a link to Korea's bridge-building legacy. As a landmark of cutting-edge engineering technology and architectural beauty, the bridge symbolizes a new era in Namhai tourism and serves as a source of pride for maritime Korea. Its completion signifies not only a feat of construction but also a testament to human innovation and progress. The Bister Bridges project undertaken by Oxfordshire County Council, in collaboration with Network Rail and Story Contracting, was a significant endeavor aimed at enhancing both the railway infrastructure and the town's connectivity. The project's primary objectives were to construct a new rail over road bridge on the Chiltern Twin Track railway line and a pedestrian tunnel, all within a tight 100 hour window over the Easter period of 2021. The project, valued at £6.35 million, demanded meticulous planning, innovative construction techniques, and close collaboration among stakeholders. The construction process involved several key steps, including Two weeks prior to the railway closure, trial lifts of the structures were conducted to fine-tune the installation process. Additionally, extensive earth-moving operations were carried out during the railway closure to prepare the site for the new underbridges. A Mamoet self-propelled modular transporter SPMT, was employed to safely transport and position the two underbridges into place within the tight timeframe of the railway possession window. Temporary propping supported the structures during installation. Due to the design, weight, and scale of the structures, they were constructed on-site using wet-pour techniques, utilizing a total of 700 cubic meters of concrete. The larger highway underbridge incorporated a new weathering steel superstructure deck, adding to the complexity of the construction process. Once the structures were in position, Approximately 21,000 tons of imported stone were backfilled around them. Additionally, 400 meters of new track were relayed to minimize disruption and ensure the timely reopening of the railway line. The construction of the new Olefence River Road Arch Bridge was not merely a structural endeavor but a testament to innovation. As part of the broader N7 upgrading initiative, it was determined that constructing a new bridge over the Olefence River was more viable than widening the existing structure, given concerns about its structural capacity. Situated within the jurisdiction of the West Coast District Municipality in South Africa's Western Cape Province, the existing Olefence River Bridge, originally built as a railway bridge in the 1970s, had deteriorated over time, manifesting cracks and requiring urgent attention. Oricon, a renowned South African engineering firm, designed the new bridge, 
incorporating a blend of traditional arch forms with contemporary materials and analysis techniques. With an overall width of 12.25 meters, the bridge accommodates two lanes, each 3.7 meters wide, along with 1.0 meter wide shoulders and a 1.5 meter wide sidewalk. To ensure safety, precast concrete F-shaped parapets, standing at 1.1 meters high, will be installed. The bridge is founded on shallow rock, providing a stable base for its construction and long-term durability. The design of the new Olefants River Bridge encompasses a main arch span of 96.6 meters. On the northern side of the arch, three spans of 14.6 meters each are present, while the southern side features two spans of 13.8 meters each, resulting in a total bridge length of 168 meters. Piers are strategically positioned along the arch, providing seven spans, each measuring 13.8 meters in length. The bridge deck comprises a reinforced concrete, continuous twin-spined solid slab with diaphragm beams at each pier. The arch structure adopts a split arch configuration, with one arch under each rib, interconnected by beams at each pier to form a ladder-like structure. The piers on the arch are of the twin column type, integrated with the arch and featuring concrete hinges near the deck. Abutments are constructed as solid cantilevers with return walls. Stefanuti Stock Civils undertook the monumental task of bringing the design to life, ensuring that the bridge not only met functional requirements but also stood as an aesthetically pleasing structure. With the support of local unskilled laborers, the project fostered community engagement and provided opportunities for skills development, leaving a lasting impact beyond its completion. The construction and installation of the rail bridge at Ravensgrade represent a remarkable feat of engineering and collaboration, culminating in the successful completion of a vital infrastructure project. Beginning in May 2022, Network Rail and Story Contracting embarked on a journey to create Europe's largest concrete structure lift, a 5,000-ton bridge, as part of the West Coast Mainline WCML, upgrade. Located near South Lanarkshire, the Ravenscraig Bridge project was integral to the broader regeneration efforts spearheaded by North Lanarkshire Council and Glasgow City Region City Deal. With an investment totaling £16.9 million, the project aimed to facilitate the construction of a new dual carriageway, complete with pedestrian and cycle paths, fostering economic growth and future development in the region. The project's success hinged on meticulous planning and execution. Over nine days, from April 1 to April 10, engineers worked tirelessly around the clock to ensure the timely installation of the bridge. This period saw the excavation of over 36,000 tons of material from the railway embankment, clearing the way for the bridge's placement. The bridge itself, a massive concrete structure, was constructed offline at Network Rail's compound near the WCML. Featuring 2,500 cubic meters of concrete, 620 tons of rebar, and 18 abutments weighing 1,097 tons, its sheer size presented a formidable challenge. However, through careful coordination and the utilization of remote-controlled self-propelled modular transport vehicles, the bridge was maneuvered into its final position with precision. Following the installation, the bridge was seamlessly integrated into the embankment, with overhead line equipment and track reinstated over the Easter weekend. The compacting of new ballast under the railway track ensured stability and safety for future operations.
Throughout the project, collaboration was key. Network Rail, Story Contracting, and North Lanarkshire Council worked hand-in-hand -hand to overcome obstacles and deliver results. Councillor Paul Kelly expressed gratitude for the project's significance in advancing the area's redevelopment, highlighting the economic opportunities it would unlock. Jeremy Spence, Senior Program Manager for Network Rail, commended the dedication of all involved, emphasizing the months of meticulous planning that preceded the intensive nine-day construction phase. John MacArthur, Managing Director of Story Contracting, Scotland, echoed these sentiments, underscoring the project's role as a testament to collaborative excellence and a milestone for Scotland's railway infrastructure. The construction of the Senku River Road Bridge at Mount Morusi in Lesotho stands as a testament to engineering prowess and cross-border collaboration. Spearheaded by the Ministry of Public Works and Transport in Lesotho, this ambitious project aimed to connect communities and facilitate smoother transportation over the majestic Senku River, also known as the Orange River. Spanning a length of 142 meters and boasting a width of 11 meters, this steel composite structure embodies both strength and durability. Its design incorporates two abutments and three piers, providing essential support amidst the river's currents. The bridge's steel girders, coupled with a robust concrete deck, ensure longevity and stability for years to come. Under the meticulous oversight of contractor Stefanu D. Stock Sibyls, the construction unfolded over an 18-month timeline. With Lesotho's rugged terrain and the river's formidable presence, the project demanded precision and ingenuity at every step. One remarkable aspect of this endeavor was the integration of cutting-edge technology for remote monitoring. Through an innovative online login facility, stakeholders could track progress from anywhere in the world. Date and time stamped images captured the evolution of the bridge, offering a comprehensive view of each day's activities. This real-time monitoring system proved invaluable, particularly for projects situated in remote locales. From the initial offloading of bridge girders to the meticulous assembly of structural components, every phase of construction unfolded with a blend of expertise and dedication. As the bridge neared completion, attention turned to monitoring the river's fluctuating levels, a critical aspect to ensure the infrastructure's resilience in the face of nature's forces. The replacement of Scotland's most frequently struck bridge, Bellside Bridge, was a monumental engineering endeavor undertaken by Story Contracting, in collaboration with key partners and stakeholders. As the project manager, Jordan Whitfield oversaw the intricate process from start to finish. Located on the Glasgow to Edinburgh line over the A73 Cali Road in Cleland, Bellside Bridge had suffered over 80 reported strikes in the past decade, necessitating its replacement. With investment from North Lanarkshire Council and Network Rail, Story Contracting embarked on the challenging task of replacing the bridge and associated works. The project began with meticulous planning and design, with Acom producing the design and MHB handling the fabrication of all temple box designs. The new bridge, weighing approximately 260 tons, was fabricated just miles away from the site at Lancer Welding's workshop over an eight-week period before being transported to Cali Road. Meanwhile, temporary works were constructed within the site compound, including platforms for cranes required during construction. A platform and system of tracers were also built to support the new structure during its assembly. To facilitate construction, a full road closure of the A73 was implemented for five weeks. During this time, two cell units and two EU decks were landed into position using a 650-ton crane. Upon completion of each section's placement, 
the bearings were welded, and grout was poured to secure the structure in place. A significant innovation in the project was the use of a self-propelled modular transporter, allowing for the rotation of the structure up to 360 degrees without moving the base. This system, a first in the UK for a bridge structure, was meticulously tested to ensure its efficacy. During a 54-hour disruptive blockade, the existing bridge structure was removed using the transporter, and the new structure was installed in its place. The abutments were prepared to accommodate the new bridge, and backfilling works were carried out to ensure stability. Despite the complexity of the project, Story Contracting and its partners executed it seamlessly, completing the work within a tight time frame and with utmost safety. The successful handover of the line on Monday morning, with only 11 minutes to spare, underscored the efficiency and precision of the project execution. The impact of the bridge replacement extends beyond improved safety for trains and reduced disruptions to the local road network. With the new structure lifting the clearance to more than 5.2 meters, the classification as a low bridge was eliminated eliminating the need for a sound diversion route for high-sided vehicles through the town. The replacement of the State Route 30 bridge over Bessemer Avenue near East Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, stands as a testament to innovation and efficiency in infrastructure development. The project, undertaken by the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation, PennDOT, addressed the need to replace a structurally deficient bridge dating back to 1930. Situated in Allegheny County, Pennsylvania, and carrying a significant daily traffic load of approximately 22,000 vehicles, the old bridge had served its purpose but was in dire need of modernization. PennDOT's approach to this project was guided by a commitment to minimizing disruptions to commuters' lives while ensuring the safety and longevity of the infrastructure. Recognizing the challenges posed by the narrow urban corridor and the high volume of traffic in the area, PennDOT opted for an accelerated bridge construction ABC, approach. This innovative method, championed by the Pennsylvania State Transportation Innovation Council, allowed for the rapid replacement of the bridge over a single weekend significantly reducing the inconvenience to motorists. The total budget for the project is estimated at 2.4 million United States dollars. The contract for the project was awarded to Bremen Construction Corporation in November. Over the winter and early spring months, preparations were underway, including the prefabrication of various components essential for the ABC project scheduled for May of the following year. This meticulous planning ensured that the project could proceed swiftly once construction commenced. When the time came for execution, crews mobilized to the site and embarked on the ambitious task of demolishing and replacing the bridge structure within a tight time frame of 57 hours. Despite facing challenges such as inclement weather, the dedicated teams persevered, working around the clock to achieve their goal. Beginning on a Friday evening, the bridge closure allowed crews to swiftly demolish the old structure by Saturday night. Subsequently, the installation of the new precast deck and approach slab panels took place, followed by the application of ultra-high-performance concrete UHPC, to bond the components together seamlessly.
several key factors contributed to the success of this rapid bridge replacement. The existing substructures were found to be in good condition, capable of supporting the new structure and traffic load without the need for extensive modifications. Precast components, including the deck fabricated locally in Saxonburg, HA, streamlined the construction process, enabling efficient assembly on-site. Additionally, the use of UHPC, known for its rapid strength development, expedited the bonding of structural elements, allowing for the swift reopening of the bridge to traffic by Monday morning. Following the primary bridge replacement, a subsequent weekend closure was scheduled to complete additional finishing touches, including the placement of a latex overlay and paving operations. These final steps ensured the functionality, durability, and safety of the newly constructed bridge, providing motorists with a smoother and more reliable commute for years to come. The successful completion of the State Route 30 bridge replacement project stands as a testament to the effectiveness of collaboration between government agencies, construction firms, and innovative engineering techniques. By embracing accelerated construction methods and leveraging advancements in materials and technology, PennDOT has demonstrated its commitment to delivering vital infrastructure projects efficiently while minimizing disruptions to the community. As transportation needs continue to evolve, such innovative approaches will play a crucial role in enhancing the resilience and sustainability of our infrastructure networks. The successful installation of the bridge leaves at Herring Bridge marks a significant milestone in the civil engineering project undertaken by Farron's construction in Great Yarmouth. This endeavor, executed in collaboration with Norfolk County Council, promises to enhance connectivity and bolster infrastructure in the region. During a meticulous 72-hour operation commencing on the 21st of March, Two colossal leaves measuring 45 meters by 24 meters were deftly maneuvered into position. Each leaf, weighing a staggering 770 tons, required an additional 500 tons of heavy concrete to establish equilibrium. The meticulous planning and execution ensured a seamless installation process, with the east leaf positioned in the closed stance within the first 24 hours, followed by the west leaf. By Thursday, the 23rd of March, both leaves were elevated to their open configuration, unveiling a navigable channel spanning 50 meters between the bascule chambers. The inception of construction in January 2021 marked the commencement of a multifaceted endeavor encompassing accommodation, demolition, marine works, and embankment construction. Once finalized, the bridge will serve as a vital link, connecting the A-47 at Harfreys Roundabout to the bustling port and enterprise zone across the river. Beyond alleviating traffic congestion and enhancing journey efficiency, the project aligns with broader initiatives aimed at stimulating investment, fostering regeneration, and catalyzing economic growth within Great Yarmouth and its environs. The production of precast concrete beams for the Shefferlands Bridge construction project is a meticulously orchestrated process, emphasizing precision, quality, and efficiency. It begins with the crafting of reinforced cages and main connections in specialized workshops dedicated to mold creation and production of reinforcing elements. Jig-built cages are meticulously assembled, ensuring structural integrity and strength. Next, the reinforced cages are positioned within partially assembled molds with precision and care, 
ensuring proper alignment and fit. Concrete pouring follows, utilizing a signature concrete mix formulated to meet high standards of durability and performance. State-of-the-art computer control matching plants guarantee consistency and quality in every pour. During the compaction process, high-frequency external vibrators or pokers are employed to achieve the desired density and strength, adhering to Shea Murtaugh's rigorous standards. Once the concrete re-specifies, precast units are transitioned to storage, systematically organized to maintain safety. Logistics teams orchestrate seamless delivery to the site, optimizing sequences for immediate erection. On site, Shea Murtaugh's legacy of excellence continues as components are swiftly and efficiently erected in color cranes and cranes, minimizing disruptions and maximizing productivity. This section is about the installation process of the Manon Bridge in East Hampton, Massachusetts. Led by the Massachusetts Department of Transportation, MassDOT, in collaboration with Northern Construction, this project aims to replace the aging bridge with a modern, efficient structure using innovative techniques. The installation process commenced with the transportation of eight deck bulb T-beams from Vermont to the construction site. These beams, each weighing approximately 100,000 pounds and spanning an impressive 93 feet in length, formed the backbone of the new bridge. As the beams were carefully unloaded from the tractor trailers that transported them, anticipation mounted among the construction crew and onlookers alike. The sheer scale of the beams, coupled with the precision required for their installation, underscored the complexity of the undertaking. Central to the installation process was the utilization of a massive crane, specially designed to handle the weight and dimensions of the deck bulb T-beams. This crane, a towering presence on the construction site, served as the linchpin of the operation, tasked with lifting and maneuvering each beam into its designated position. The installation began with planning and coordination. Engineers and construction personnel measured and assessed the site, ensuring that each beam would be placed with pinpoint accuracy. Safety protocols were rigorously enforced, with the well-being of the crew and the integrity of the structure taking precedence at every stage of the process. With preparations complete, the crane swung into action, its hydraulic arms extending to hoist the first deck bulb T-beam into the air. As the beam soared over the Manon River, guided by a network of cables and rigging, a sense of anticipation filled the air. Every eye was trained on the intricate ballet unfolding overhead, as the beam was delicately lowered into place. The installation of the first beam served as a learning experience, requiring adjustments and fine-tuning to ensure a seamless fit. As the construction team gained momentum, subsequent beam installations proceeded with greater efficiency. The experience and expertise of the crew shone through, as they navigated the complexities of the installation process with confidence and precision. Throughout the day, the construction site buzzed with activity as beams were lifted, positioned, and secured in rapid succession. Despite the occasional challenge posed by inclement weather, progress remained steady, a testament to the resilience and determination of the construction team. With each beam securely in place, the bridge began to take shape before the eyes of onlookers. 
What was once a series of individual components now coalesced into a unified structure, spanning the river with strength and purpose. The installation process, though arduous, yielded tangible results, underscoring the transformative power of infrastructure investment. As the final beam was lowered into position, a collective sense of accomplishment washed over the construction site. Months of planning and preparation had culminated in this moment, as the Manon Bridge stood poised to serve the community for generations to come. The construction of the new cable car to Germany's highest peak, the Zugspets aimed to provide visitors with a breathtaking experience and a safe means of reaching the summit. The logistics of delivering construction materials to the site, considering the extreme conditions at an altitude of 2,962 meters, required careful planning. Expert workers familiar with construction in high mountain areas were essential for the project's success. Extensive geological surveys were conducted to ensure the project's safety and overcome the challenges posed by the mountainous terrain. The first phase involved erecting two towers on the north side of the mountain. These towers would serve as key support structures for the cable car system. Using specialized equipment and techniques, the towers gradually took shape, rising high above the mountain slopes. Simultaneously, the construction of the southern station began. This part of the project progressed swiftly to ensure a smooth operation and seamless transition for passengers. The Southern Station acted as the starting point for the cable car journey, providing a convenient and well-designed facility for visitors. At the summit, an extraordinary terrace was created, offering visitors a 360-degree panoramic view of the stunning surroundings. This unique feature added an exceptional touch to the cable car experience, allowing people to enjoy the breathtaking beauty of the Zugspets and its surrounding peaks from a remarkable vantage point. The installation of sturdy steel beams and columns for the Zugspets project is a critical component of the construction process, ensuring the structural integrity and stability of the building. These steel components are carefully designed and implemented to withstand the harsh alpine environment and support the weight and forces exerted on the structure. The first step in the installation process involves detailed planning and engineering calculations to determine the optimal placement and design of the steel beams and columns. Factors such as load-bearing capacity, wind and snow loads, seismic activity, and architectural requirements are taken into consideration to ensure the safety and longevity of the structure. Once the design phase is complete, the actual installation begins. Large cranes and specialized equipment are employed to hoist and position the heavy steel beams and columns into place. Skilled workers, including iron workers and welders, collaborate to securely connect the beams and columns using techniques such as bolting and welding. The steel beams and columns are meticulously aligned and leveled to maintain the intended structural alignment and ensure proper load distribution. Precision is crucial during this process, as any misalignment or miscalculation could compromise the stability and safety of the entire structure. To enhance the durability and resistance of the steel components, they are often treated with protective coatings or finishes. This helps to prevent corrosion caused by exposure to moisture, temperature variations, and other environmental factors, thereby extending the lifespan of the steel elements.
Once the support structure for the Zugspitz cable car was securely in place, the installation of the cable car components commenced. This phase involved the meticulous integration of various mechanical systems to ensure the safe and efficient operation of the cable car system. One of the key elements installed during this phase were the cables themselves. These cables, typically made of high-strength steel, are responsible for bearing the weight of the cabins and passengers as they traverse the mountain. Skilled technicians carefully measured and cut the cables to the precise lengths required for each section of the cable car system. They were then expertly threaded and tensioned, adhering to stringent safety standards and engineering specifications. In addition to the cables, the cabins were also installed. These cabins serve as the passenger compartments, providing a comfortable and secure environment during the ascent and descent. Each cabin was meticulously positioned and attached to the cables, ensuring proper alignment and balance. Safety features, such as emergency braking systems and passenger restraints, were meticulously integrated into the cabin design to guarantee the well-being of the passengers. Furthermore, a range of mechanical systems were implemented to facilitate the smooth operation of the cable car. These systems included motors, pulleys, and gears that allowed for controlled movement and precise positioning of the cabins. Advanced control systems and sensors were also installed to monitor and regulate the speed, acceleration, and deceleration of the cable car, ensuring a safe and comfortable ride for passengers. After approximately 50 months of construction, the Baiheaton Hydropower Station has reached a major milestone with the completion of its main section. The construction of the massive dam involved the pouring of more than 8 million cubic meters of cement concrete, creating a structure that stands 289 meters high. Chinese experts specially designed the concrete to prevent potential thermal cracks caused by temperature changes. With an installed capacity of 16 million kilowatts, the Baiheaton Hydropower Station is a formidable power generation facility. It has the capability to produce over 62 billion kilowatt hours of electricity per year, which is more than 15 times the energy output of the renowned Hoover Dam in the United States. This significant capacity will contribute to reducing China's carbon dioxide emissions by more than 51 million tons annually. The hydropower station is equipped with 16 homegrown generating units, each boasting a capacity of 1 million kilowatts, making them the largest in the world. It is located downstream of the Jinsha River, in the upper section of the Yangtze River, spanning across the Union County of Sichuan Province and Shaojia County in neighboring Yunnan Province. Beyond electricity generation, the Baiheaton Hydropower Station also serves other crucial purposes. It acts as a key component of China's West-East Power Transmission Project, addressing the issue of unbalanced power supply across the country. Additionally, it aids in flood control and navigation improvement in the region. In terms of installed capacity, the Baiheaton Hydropower Station ranks second only to the Three Gorges Dam in Hubei Province. The first batch of generating units is scheduled to begin operation in July of this year, with the full operational status of the world's second-largest hydropower station expected to be achieved one year thereafter. The completion of the Baiheaton Hydropower Station marks a significant achievement in China's pursuit of renewable energy sources and highlights its commitment to sustainable development. This remarkable project showcases the nation's expertise in engineering and its dedication to reducing carbon emissions while meeting the growing energy demands of its population. Peiko's Rock Foundation is a revolutionary solution for the onshore wind industry that offers a cost, effective and efficient alternative to traditional concrete foundations. 
Designed to provide stability and durability, Pecos Rock Foundation has gained significant popularity among wind turbine developers and operators worldwide. The assembling process of Pecos Rock Foundation begins with site preparation, where the ground is assessed for suitability. This includes analyzing soil conditions, topography, and environmental factors. Once the site is deemed suitable, the installation process can commence. The foundation assembly starts with drilling holes into the bedrock. These holes serve as anchors for the steel components of the foundation. The depth and diameter of the holes are determined based on the turbine specifications and the local geology. Specialized drilling equipment is used to ensure precise and secure anchoring. Next, steel anchor pipes are inserted into the drilled holes. These pipes are specifically designed to provide exceptional load-bearing capacity and ensure the stability of the wind turbine. Once the pipes are firmly in place, they are grouted with high-strength cementitious material. This grouting process reinforces the connection between the anchor pipes and the bedrock, creating a solid foundation. After the grouting is complete, the steel reinforcement cage is assembled around the anchor pipes. This cage adds additional strength and stability to the foundation structure. The reinforcement bars are securely connected to the anchor pipes, creating a unified system that can withstand the dynamic forces exerted by the wind turbine. Finally, a concrete cap is poured over the steel reinforcement cage, encasing it completely. This cap provides a stable base for mounting the wind turbine tower and ensures a seamless transition from the foundation to the tower structure. Pecos Rock Foundation offers several advantages over traditional concrete foundations. It eliminates the need for extensive excavation, reducing construction time and costs. The use of steel components provides superior load-bearing capacity and allows for precise positioning of the foundation. Additionally, the foundation's design allows for easier dismantling and reuse, making it a sustainable solution for the wind industry. Shanghai Electric has successfully installed China's first 8 MW offshore wind turbine. The turbine, known as the 8MW167, boasts the highest capacity among operational wind turbines in China. Compared to the previous 7MW154 turbine, the 8MW turbine offers a 20% increase in electricity production and reduces the levelized cost of electricity LCOE, by approximately 11%. With a rotor diameter of 167 meters and 81.4 meter blades, the turbine has a swept area of 21,900 square meters. To ensure seamless grid integration, the Shanghai Electric Project team utilized lithium batteries as a supporting power source. This allows the power conversion system to regulate voltage and frequency to the desired levels. When the turbine is idle and synchronized with the microgrid bus voltage, it starts power generation as soon as the wind reaches the cut-in speed. The construction of Raffle City Chongqing, the world's largest horizontal tower in Kaia Tianmen Square, is a remarkable feat that has transformed the city's skyline and established itself as a prominent landmark. The complex consists of eight 250-meter skyscrapers that have been meticulously erected, showcasing the cutting-edge capabilities of modern architecture. At the core of this grand project lies a colossal 100,000-ton steel structure, serving as the framework for the entire development. One of the most striking features of Raffles City Chongqing is the steel-structured corridor that stretches an impressive 250 meters above the ground. This corridor, also known as the Horizontal Tower, spans a length equivalent to eight standard swimming pools, further solidifying its claim as the largest of its kind in the world. The construction of this horizontal skyscraper is an extraordinary accomplishment in the history of architecture. It pushes the boundaries of what is possible in terms of length and height, 
captivating the imagination of onlookers and cementing Chongqing's status as a hub of innovation and progress. Raffles City Chongqing not only redefines the city's skyline, but also serves as a symbol of human ingenuity and ambition. Its completion marks the beginning of new narratives in modern architecture, leaving a lasting impression on both the local community and visitors from around the world. Building a 15-story hotel in just six days in China is an incredible testament to the country's expertise in rapid construction. The process begins with extensive pre-planning, including detailed architectural and structural designs, as well as logistical considerations. Next, prefabrication plays a crucial role in accelerating the construction timeline. Off-site, factories produce standardized building components such as wall panels, floors, and bathroom units. These prefabricated elements are manufactured with precision and shipped to the construction site, ready for assembly. Simultaneously, on-site preparations take place. The foundation is laid, often using precast concrete elements that can be quickly positioned and secured. Utilities such as electrical and plumbing systems are installed, ensuring the building's infrastructure is in place. Once the prefabricated components arrive, construction teams work around the clock to assemble the hotel. Tower cranes are employed to lift and position the prefabricated sections, which are then securely connected and integrated into the structure. This method allows for the rapid construction of multiple floors simultaneously, drastically reducing the overall timeline. As the hotel takes shape, interior finishes, including furnishings, fixtures, and fittings, are installed. Meanwhile, external cladding and facade elements are applied to provide a visually appealing and functional exterior. The construction of a 30-story hotel prototype in a mere 360 hours by Broad Group, a Chinese sustainable building company, is a groundbreaking achievement in the field of construction. This remarkable feat follows their previous success in 2011, when they built a 15-story building in just one week. The use of prefabricated modular buildings played a crucial role in these accelerated construction timelines. Prefabricated modular buildings offer several advantages over conventional construction methods. The precision in fabrication is incredibly high, with tolerances as low as plus or minus 0.2 millimeters. This level of accuracy ensures that the building components fit together seamlessly during assembly. The on-site construction management is also highly coordinated, thanks to the prefabrication process, allowing for smoother and more efficient construction. One of the key benefits of prefabricated modular construction is the significantly shorter construction time span. By manufacturing the building components off-site and delivering them for assembly, the construction process can be expedited. This approach also minimizes construction waste, making it a more sustainable option. With this construction technology, the hotel had impressive features such as withstanding magnitude, nine earthquakes, being five times more energy efficient and providing 20 times purer air. The global market for prefabricated modular buildings has been experiencing steady growth in recent years. According to a report by Grandview Research, the global modular construction market size was valued at 114.78 billion United States dollars in 2020 and is expected to expand at a compound annual growth rate CAGR of 5.9% from 2021 to 2028. The modular construction market in North America is one of the largest globally. The Modular Building Institute MBI, estimates that approximately 3% to 5% of all new non-residential construction in the United States utilizes modular techniques. Additionally, the off-site construction market in Canada has been growing steadily, with modular construction accounting for a significant portion. The Intercontinental Shanghai Wonderland, an eco-friendly hotel, was a remarkable construction project undertaken by CSCEC, China State Construction Engineering Corporation. Situated in an abandoned quarry, this unique hotel hangs upside down in the deep Tianma pit, making it the first of its kind in the world. The entire construction process took 12 years to complete, 
and it involved overcoming numerous challenges and obtaining over 40 patents. Covering an area of approximately 100,000 square meters, the quarry itself had nearly vertical slopes, presenting unprecedented difficulties in various aspects of construction, from piling and material transportation to the installation of tower cranes, each step posed its own set of challenges. To ensure the stability of the cliff and avoid secondary damage to the pit, the final design plan was to build the hotel in accordance with the terrain of the pit. Chief Engineer Li Chalfei faced the enormous challenge of guaranteeing the stability of the cliff. Concrete structures near the cliff were connected to pre-stressed anchor cables and bolts of varying lengths, acting as giant steel stitches to support and stabilize the cliff. A meticulous and time-consuming task, the reinforcement involved anchoring 99 35-meter-long anchor cables at the pit head and the back of the hotel as well as inserting 6,500 anchors to an average depth of 10 meters in the cliff. In total, the reinforced area spanned an impressive 5,760 square meters. Throughout the construction process, the team's ingenuity and determination shone through. They transformed a once unfeasible design concept into a reality, proving the inexhaustible nature of creativity. As the hotel reached the horizon, it instantly became a landmark that garnered global attention. The concrete slip form silo is an impressive structure designed to meet the specific storage needs of the Asmang BREP project in the Northern Cape. Standing at a height of 25 meters, this silo is constructed using a slip form method, which allows for continuous pouring and vertical extrusion of concrete, resulting in a seamless and efficient construction process. The slip form technique used in the construction of this silo involves a movable formwork system that is incrementally raised as the concrete is poured. This method eliminates the need for traditional formwork and scaffolding, significantly reducing construction time and costs. The slip form system ensures a consistent and high quality finish as the concrete is continuously poured and consolidated, resulting in a strong and durable structure. The silo is divided into four equal quadrants, each serving as a separate storage compartment. This segmentation allows for efficient organization and storage of different materials or products. The design of the silo is the result of meticulous planning and engineering by DRA, a renowned engineering firm, while the construction is carried out by Stefana T. Stock Civils, a reputable contractor known for its expertise in large-scale civil projects. The concrete slip form silo is an essential component of the Asmang BREP project, providing a reliable and secure storage solution for the materials involved. Its robust construction and efficient design ensure that the stored materials are protected from environmental factors and remain in optimal condition. This silo showcases the advancements in construction techniques and the ability to create complex structures with speed and precision. The Pergan Quarry, situated in the picturesque Drama Prefecture of Northern Greece, is a shining gem in the world of marble extraction. Covering a vast expanse of 348 acres, it stands as one of Europe's largest white marble quarries. Its annual production capacity of 160,000 tons of marble blocks is a testament to its significance in the industry. What sets Pergan Quarry apart is its meticulous approach to extraction. The quarry is thoughtfully structured with 24 layers, ensuring optimal quarrying while adhering to stringent environmental regulations. These layers blend seamlessly with the natural contours of the mountain, guaranteeing accessibility through a purpose-built 20-kilometer road network. The quarry offers a stunning array of five distinct white marble varieties, Pergan Alas, Pergan Mist, Pergan Nevadas, Pergan Delta, 
and Pergan Ebru Arabesque. Azul Aran, with its captivating blue-gray feldspar, is a truly unique granite found in the Spanish Pyrenees. This exquisite stone is celebrated for its versatility, making it suitable for both interior and exterior applications. Its distinctive blue-gray radiance sets it apart as a one-of-a-kind material in the world of natural stone. Nestled in the Val d'Aran Valley of the northeastern Spanish Pyrenees, the quarry bearing the same name as the stone, Azul Aran, is a testament to meticulous and eco-conscious extraction practices. The quarrying process is marked by precision and efficiency, primarily employing wire saws while minimizing the use of explosives. This conscientious approach ensures minimal disruption to the surrounding natural environment and results in less material wastage. What makes the quarrying of Azul Aran particularly challenging is the geological orientation of the deposit. The narrow pegmatite vein that comprises this magnificent stone runs vertically along the mountainside, adding complexity to the extraction process. However, the commitment to responsible quarrying persists. Despite its demanding geological characteristics, Azul Aran quarry operates with a cap on its annual volume due to its unique geological orientation. This exclusivity adds to the allure of the material. Only a fraction of the deposit is suitable for slab production, while the remaining quarried material finds purpose in road construction, civil engineering, and the creation of check dams. For the production of slabs, Azul Aran Quarry focuses on delivering large, perfectly square blocks of the utmost quality. These blocks, measuring 600 to 800 cubic meters annually, are prized for their suitability in crafting kitchen countertops and specialized objects. Smaller blocks, a byproduct of this quarrying process, find their niche in flooring and various interior design projects, contributing to the stone's enduring legacy as a symbol of exclusivity and sophistication. This diamond wire saw machine is an advanced tool used in quarry stone cutting. It features a steel cable embedded with diamond beads, acting as cutting agents. The machine's frame can be adjusted for direction and depth, while a coolant system prevents overheating. Operators control the machine's speed for precise cutting. Diamond wire saws have replaced traditional methods due to their efficiency and reduced environmental impact. The process begins with setup and proper tensioning of the wire. The machine is started, and the wire moves through the stone, gradually slicing it. Operators monitor the process, ensuring accuracy. Once complete, the stone block is ready for further processing or transport. One of the most critical phases in quarrying process is the separation and extraction of stone blocks after they have been sawed and prepared for extraction. Heavy-duty equipment, such as excavators equipped with specialized attachments, plays a pivotal role in achieving this task efficiently. In this part, we will explore the indispensable role of heavy-duty excavators in quarry operations, with a focus on examples like Volvo excavators and Sani excavators pushing massive granite blocks. Quarrying is an ancient practice that has evolved significantly over time, and today, it involves cutting and shaping large stone blocks for various applications, from construction to artistry. 
However, once these stone blocks are ready, they are often tightly embedded within the quarry's rock formations. Extracting them without causing damage or wasting precious resources, such as time and fuel, is a formidable challenge. Heavy-duty excavators are the unsung heroes of quarry operations. These colossal machines are designed to tackle the most demanding tasks, and when equipped with specialized attachments, they become indispensable tools for separating, extracting, and transporting stone blocks from quarries. The effectiveness of excavators in quarries is further enhanced by the use of specialized attachments. For instance, some excavators are equipped with grapples, thumbs, or rippers specifically designed for stone extraction. These attachments enable the operator to securely grip and lift heavy stone blocks with ease. Sani, another renowned name in heavy machinery, has also made a significant mark in the quarrying industry. Their excavators are known for their exceptional power and durability, making them well suited for the challenging task of separating and pushing massive stone blocks. A remarkable example of Sani's capabilities in the quarrying sector is the ability to push 1500-ton granite blocks. This is an astonishing feat that demonstrates the sheer power and ingenuity of Sani excavators. Such heavy lifting and pushing tasks require not only robust machinery but also skilled operators who understand the intricacies of manipulating such colossal loads. Volvo excavators have earned a reputation for their robustness, efficiency, and versatility. In the quarrying industry, their strength and precision make them ideal candidates for handling the formidable task of extracting stone blocks. These excavators can be equipped with specialized tools, such as hydraulic thumbs or grapples, which enable operators to grip and manipulate stone blocks with unparalleled precision. One of the standout features of Volvo excavators is their fuel efficiency. Quarry operations can be incredibly energy-intensive, but Volvo has made significant strides in designing excavators that minimize fuel consumption. This not only reduces operational costs but also has a positive environmental impact by lowering carbon emissions. While the machinery itself is crucial, the human element cannot be overlooked in quarry operations. Mining machinery operators are akin to artists in their ability to manipulate these heavy-duty excavators effectively. They must have a deep understanding of the machinery, the quarry's layout, and the nature of the stone blocks they are dealing with. The operator's skill in delicately separating stone blocks without causing damage is akin to a surgeon's precision. They must navigate the complexities of the quarry's terrain, avoiding potential hazards while maximizing efficiency. Additionally, they are responsible for maintaining the machinery, ensuring that it operates at peak performance. The Dazini Q3000 is a powerful remote control chainsaw attachment designed for use with the CAT 432D backhub. This impressive tool is specially crafted for quarrying applications, making it capable of effortlessly slicing through tough materials like marble. Operators can control nearly every aspect of the Q3000 from inside the backhoe's cab, including blade positioning and the angle of the cut, thanks to the backhoe stabilizers, making it a versatile and efficient cutting solution. 
The Volvo Wheel Loader is a robust and versatile heavy machinery designed for demanding tasks in industries such as stone quarry. In this marble quarry, the Volvo plays a crucial role in efficiently loading massive marble blocks onto vehicles for transportation. With its impressive capacity, the Volvo is well equipped to handle the substantial weight of marble blocks commonly found in quarries. Its powerful engine and advanced hydraulic system provide the necessary strength and agility required for this task. The loader's bucket is specifically designed to withstand the abrasive nature of stone materials and ensure smooth and reliable operation. In a marble quarry, precision and careful handling are essential to prevent damage to the valuable marble blocks. The Volvo offers excellent maneuverability and control, allowing operators to pick up, lift, and load marble blocks with precision. Its ergonomic cabin provides a comfortable and safe environment for operators, ensuring productivity and safety on the job site. The efficiency of the Volvo not only speeds up the loading process but also minimizes downtime, contributing to cost-effective quarry operations. And what we're seeing is the Volvo L220F loading 28 tons marble block to the truck in a spectacular way. Driving an 8x8 Scania G500 XT with 24 tons of marble on treacherous mountain roads in Carrara, Italy is a job fraught with danger. These routes, steep and winding, are unforgiving, especially when you're tasked with maneuvering massive marble blocks. Driver faces daily challenges that demand unwavering skill and courage. The danger is palpable as the truck navigates steep gravel roads, both ascending and descending, with marble blocks precariously secured. The risks are inherent in the very nature of the job, but it's a passion that runs deep in their blood. The Scania truck is driver's lifeline in this perilous profession. With its 500 horsepower and all-wheel drive capability, it's tailor-made for the harsh conditions. The truck's robust build and cutting-edge safety features make it a trusted companion on these hazardous journeys. The diamond multi-blade gang saw, specifically the gang saw with 80 blades, is designed for the precise and efficient cutting of marble blocks into slabs. Here's a breakdown of how this machine operates. Block elevator. The marble block to be cut is placed on a robust block elevator. This elevator can move the block up and down, allowing the blades to cut the marble as they move past it. The elevator's movement is facilitated by a screw nut mechanism driven by gearboxes, ensuring precise up-down movement. Blade rack and hydrostatic linear guide system. At the heart of the machine is a fixed blade rack, which holds the 80 diamond-tipped blades. These blades are guided by a hydrostatic linear guide system, ensuring that they move smoothly and consistently. This system is crucial for maintaining the precision of the cuts, as it keeps the blade rack steady against forces from various directions during the cutting process. Cutting process. As the machine operates, the blades, equipped with diamond tips for enhanced cutting efficiency, slice through the marble block. The long cutting stroke combined with the high-speed cutting capability ensures that the marble is cut into slabs with a smooth and clean surface. Main shaft and flywheel system. The main shaft, crafted from forged steel, plays a pivotal role in transmitting the movement to the blades. The flywheel's movement is transmitted to the blade rack by two connection rods, ensuring synchronized and steady movement of the blades.
Automatic Lubrication System To ensure smooth operation and reduce wear and tear, the machine is equipped with an automatic lubrication system. This system lubricates the slides of the elevator, screws, and nuts, ensuring their smooth movement. Control Unit The machine's operations are overseen by a control unit equipped with a touchscreen operator terminal. This interface allows operators to define block dimensions, start the main motor, and oversee the entire cutting process. Sensors on the machine ensure that everything operates within safe parameters. Safety and efficiency. The gang saw operates without vibrations, even at high speeds, thanks to the hydrostatic linear bearings. Additionally, the machine can efficiently cut multiple small blocks simultaneously, enhancing its productivity. Marble and Granite Slab Polishing Lines Today's polishing machines for marble and granite slabs are crafted to the highest standards, ensuring exceptional material quality. They are designed to meet global expectations, leveraging advanced technology to deliver unparalleled capacity and performance. These machines are built for longevity, featuring a corrosion-resistant mainframe, bridge, and integrated electronic and mechanical systems, ensuring optimal performance at full capacity. Robust Frame The slab polishing machine's main frame is constructed using welded techniques, resulting in a durable and corrosion-resistant structure. It incorporates NPI 450 profiles for primary consoles and NPI 380 for intermediate ones, reinforced by HEB 100 profiles. The main frame and other components are sanded to ensure optimal adhesion of epoxy resin and dye. After the epoxy application, these parts undergo precision CNC machining. Once pre-assembled, a final dyeing process is applied, preparing the components for the final assembly. Advanced Polishing Head The polishing spindles undergo meticulous CNC machining. These shafts, made from a special steel, are chrome-plated to prevent corrosion. Motor pulleys and polishing plates are crafted from a unique alloy cast iron, while the polishing tables are made from a special alloy cast aluminum. These tables, designed to hold up to eight abrasives, have connection holes and abrasive holder channels precisely machined. For ease of assembly and adjustment, motor pulleys feature quick connection couplings. The compact design of the polishing heads ensures easy assembly and disassembly during maintenance. Protection for the inner spindles and roller bearings is provided against water and dust through oil barriers, labyrinths, and specialized seals. A PVC protective cover shields the polishing shaft. These spindles are powered by high-strength poly V belts with a PL profile, ensuring durability even under sudden strains. Abrasive usage is monitored using linear potentiometers on both the polishing head and the machine's entrance, which measures the slab's thickness. If an abrasive runs out, an alert light notifies the operator, and details appear on the touchscreen. The operator can then easily manage the abrasive replacement process through intuitive touchscreen controls. For optimal polishing quality, three air valves are used for the first two heads, and two air valves for subsequent heads. This system, combined with the bridge's high speed, ensures even broken or regular slabs receive a high-quality polish. Bridge Construction The bridge is crafted from a single piece of welded steel plates, complemented by a sliding console made from steel casting. Its robust construction minimizes displacement and offers resistance against vibrations. Rectangular bores on the bridge facilitate the assembly of polishing spindles. These spindles, once assembled, 
ensure the bridge's center of gravity remains central, providing stability during its movements. The bridge's front curtain system, visible in a left-side photograph, is motorized, allowing operators to adjust it with ease. Lubrication system. The lubrication process for the polishing spindles is streamlined, with the system positioned at the bridge's front. Each polishing spindle benefits from an individual central lubrication system. Additionally, the rotary water mechanism and three distinct areas within the polishing spindle are maintained by this central lubrication. Bridge and Belt Dynamics The belts of the marble and granite slab polishing line are powered by a planet reducer. The bridge's movement is driven by two braking servo motor, servo reducer groups, with inverter-controlled motors allowing adjustable bridge speeds. The bridge houses two shafts, a driving shaft and a balancing shaft. The movement system's racks and pinion gears, featuring helical evolvent profiles, are hardened and finely ground. Quick connection couplings ensure seamless transfer of movement, preventing any gaps between the shaft and gears. The bridge can swiftly start and stop, maintaining its stability even during abrupt movements, and operates silently at speeds up to 50 meters per minute. Bridge Movement Mechanism The bridge glides between rollers and plates situated in oil baths at the bridge's base. These components, made from abrasion-resistant material, undergo heat treatment and grinding. Stainless steel covers shield the roller systems from dust and water. Water barriers near the oil baths prevent moisture intrusion, with transparent oil level plugs and draining plugs ensuring optimal oil levels. Advanced Control System The machine boasts a cutting-edge touchscreen terminal, enabling operators to control and monitor various parameters. This terminal, along with the control panel, is conveniently located at the machine's entrance. The control panel houses manual operation buttons, including those for adjusting bridge and belt speeds. A slab map, created by map switches, is sent to the PLC, which, using a program developed by MKS, automates the machine's movements. Pneumatic Control Systems Two distinct pneumatic control systems are integrated into the machine. The first, a calibration system, allows for separate adjustments of upper and lower pressures. This system is particularly beneficial when using corrosive diamonds, as it controls the primary abrasive process. The second system offers adjustable upper pressure. The intricate process of stone splitting in Okazaki City. Stone splitting, a craft as ancient as civilization itself, has been pivotal in shaping the landscapes and infrastructures of societies across the globe. In Okazaki City, Japan, this art form takes on a unique significance, given the region's prominence as a leading stone producing area. This article delves into the meticulous process of stone splitting, as practiced in the heart of Okazaki. The setting, Okazaki's stone quarries. Tucked away in the Takiwa School District of Okazaki City lies a quarry renowned for producing the exquisite Usui stone. The journey to this quarry is an adventure in itself. A narrow road, branching off from the prefectural route, winds its way into the mountains, leading to the heart of the stone extraction site. The path, though serene during the day, can be treacherous at night, with tales of lost travelers adding to its mystique. The maestro, Mr. Koji Nakane. 
At the helm of this intricate process is Mr. Koji Nakane of Nakane Stone Company, Limited. With decades of experience under his belt, Mr. Nakane oversees the extraction and shaping of countless stones. Among the myriad of stones extracted, a 7-meter-wide stone slab stands out, not just for its size but also its pristine condition, a testament to the expertise of the craftsman. The stone, Uju stone. The Uju stone, officially known as Muscovite biotite granite, is a radiant white stone. Its uniqueness lies in its composition, with almost equal amounts of biotite and muscovite, making it a rare granite variant globally. This stone, primarily used for tombstones and building materials, is a symbol of the region's rich geological heritage. The evolution of the quarry. The stone quarry in Takiwa has a rich history, with its origins traced back to the construction of the Okazaki Castle during the Muromachi period. Over the years, the topography of the quarry has undergone significant transformations. Continuous excavation over seven decades has reshaped mountains into expansive valleys, surrounded by towering rock faces. This transformation is a testament to human ingenuity and the relentless pursuit of craftsmanship. The process, from blasting to stone breaking. The primary task of a mountain stone shop is to extract stone from the mountain, shape it as per requirements, and then dispatch it to the end customer. The extraction process begins with blasting, a technique that involves the use of gunpowder. The quantity of gunpowder and its placement is determined based on the stone's size and the desired direction of the break. This initial phase, though aided by technology, relies heavily on the quarryman's intuition and experience. Post-blasting, the extracted stone is further split into manageable pieces. This is where tools like the toya, a traditional stone cutting tool, come into play. Depending on the size of the stone, different tools, such as the fly arrows and seri arrows, are employed. The stone is first drilled using a jackhammer, post which these tools are used to split the stone further. The expertise of the craftsman is evident in this phase, as they ensure the stone is split in harmony with its natural grain. Continuous improvement. The stone splitting process has seen various innovations over the years. 
For instance, in 1992, a significant advancement was the introduction of a large roof over the stone cracking area, enhancing work efficiency. Such innovations underscore the industry's commitment to evolving while preserving traditional techniques. the legacy and the future. Despite the challenges, including a decline in operational quarries, the passion for stone splitting remains undiminished in Okazaki. Mr. Nakane, representing the spirit of this craft, aspires to pass on the age-old techniques to future generations. The stones extracted from these quarries, be it for tombstones, building pillars, or torii gates, hold a special place in the region's cultural and architectural landscape. The stone quarries of Takiwa, with their rich 500-year legacy, are more than just excavation sites. They are a testament to the harmonious relationship between man and nature, where raw stone is meticulously shaped into pieces of art and utility. As these stones become integral to the built environment, they serve as enduring symbols of tradition, craftsmanship, and the indomitable human spirit.